Trump was with Dave Ramsey. I I definitely 100% have not reviewed this yet. I have not had time. But I'm definitely into Dave Ramsey with his debt with his debt saving and all that stuff. So his financial planning and all that, definitely into that. And he's talking to Trump. He asked Kamala and Trump, and Trump came first. I don't know if Kamala will, but I support what Dave Ramsey is doing when it comes to people getting their financial literacy up and getting out of the shackles of debt. So I really wanted to review this because I know he's going to talk a lot about Trump's economic plan for the middle class. So that's really why I wanted to get into this and to see what they what they have to say. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Can Trump plan clean up America's financial mess? I told y'all for sure. It's going. Ooh, this is what it's going to go down. Let's get it. This inflation thing is a big deal. So in the first 90 days, the strokes that you make to change the economy when you're elected, that's pretty dramatic. I believe I'll be able to get energy down to 50% of what it is right now within a period of less than a year. I know small businesses are where jobs come from. When you guys in government can take your hands off of small business, mm -hmm. we're able to employ people and change things. So how can you help small businesses? You have to love what you do. If you don't love what you do, it's not going to work. It's the largest tax cuts in the history of our country. That's why we became so successful. They you know, it's funny. think we can do that again? Yeah, I think we can go lower. If I don't turn my head at the exact 90 degree angle, if I was a little off, I'm not doing this very nice interview with you. I hear you going back to Butler and finish the speech. I am. I'm going to say, Hey guys, Dave Ramsey here with The Ramsey Show. If you don't know what The Ramsey Show is, it's a show about life, about money, about relationships. It's not a show about politics. We specifically over the years have tried to remind you over and over again that what happens in your house is more important for your success than what happens in the White House. We also realize that this election is a really important time right now. The people are really looking at what's happening. There's a real divisiveness in the air, a lot of anger in the air. So our team reached out to Vice President Harris's team about the opportunity to sit down with her for a long form interview and reached out to President Trump's team about the opportunity to sit down for a long form interview with him and to talk about ideas, talk about what's going to happen, not what has happened and not about personalities and not about name calling because both sides are pretty good at all of that stuff. And the fact that I sit down with either one of these candidates is gonna piss some of you off and frankly, I'm perfectly fine with that. It's something I wanted to do and I felt like it was something we needed to talk about. So I find myself sitting here in Trump Tower getting ready to interview President Trump for a few minutes. I think you're going to find this really interesting. So All right. So just off the bat, y'all see, this is going to be about the questions. Like this isn't, this isn't going to be about Kamala. We don't need the name Kamala. We don't need all that. We need to know what you're going to do for the American people. That's what this is going to be about y'all. What are you going to do for the American people? What's your plan? For the American people, like he said, all the name calling, all the what happened in the past, good O's, good. That's cool. That's cool. Now, we in now, we living right now. Give it to us, man. I'm ready. I'm really excited to see this. Let's go. So, President Trump, thanks for taking time to sit down with us. Thank you. Honor to be with you. Good Thank to hang you, out man. with you. As you know, we do a show called The Ramsey Show and talk to regular folks every day call in most of the time with financial trouble, sometimes right. with financial victories, uh, stuff we've taught them to do, the basic grandma's common sense stuff. Right. And that audience that's going to be watching this is they're not concerned with a lot of things, but they are concerned with $8 eggs, $5 right. gas, 7% <laughs> interest rates, and a house they can't afford with wages not going up as fast as house prices. Right. This inflation thing is a big deal. So in the first 90 days, the strokes that you make uh, to change the economy when you're elected are a big deal. What are you, what's the first things you're going to do on that? In, that well, in terms of inflation, you're right. And it's almost inflation over the economy, if you want to really know, because people are getting wiped out like never before. I think it's the highest inflation we've ever had. They say it's the highest in 48 years. I think it's the highest ever. There's never been any mess like this. And it's because of what they did with energy. Also, then they topped it with spending with money that trillions and trillions of dollars that they didn't need that's being just wasted. But uh, the first thing you have to do is get the energy down. If you get the energy down, other things are going to follow. You want to get the interest rates down too. And interestingly, even interest rates are going to follow energy because it's going to take that burden off the shoulders of the economy and off the shoulders of inflation itself. 
And we are going to drill at a level that you haven't seen since, uh, let's say, four or five years ago. But even more so, we would have been so dominant by this point. If you remember, uh, when you go back to the beginning of this really failed administration that we're in right now, what they did was they turned off the energy. They turned off everything that I had. So you're turning back on the Keystone. You're going to turn back on the drill oh, baby drill line and the it's drill uh, baby in drill. your acceptance speech at the convention. The, it, it says it all. You know, I'd like to use another line, but there's no line that's better. And we're going to drill baby drill. But the fact that they turned it off and then the energy, if you look back at the very initial period of their administration, the the numbers started going through the roof, the energy numbers. Inflation was close. And then they went back to Trump where they're trying to equal it. And it kept it bad as opposed to horrific. And it's been really bad. And the energy has been very expensive, but nothing like it could have been. So they went back to Trump type things. But we would have been now three to four times more. We would have been dominating the entire world on energy. We have more than anybody else, as you've heard me say, but as you also know, right. we have, I call it liquid gold. We have more liquid gold under our feet than anybody else. Actually, by far, we would have dominated. We would have been taking care of Europe. We would have been taking care of Asia. We would have been taking care, you know, Anwar in Alaska is the biggest find anywhere in the world. It could be as big as Saudi Arabia. And I got it. Ronald Reagan couldn't get it. Nobody could get it. I got it. It was done, ready to start. And when these people came in, they turned it off. They, they, they terminated it. Nobody could believe it. I don't know if people realize that, you know, 10 to 15% of the entire economy is energy right. and it weaves its tentacles through everything else. So $5 gas affects, affects the bread truck who's yeah. delivering the bread yeah. and that affects the cost of the bread then. And so you know, getting that plentiful right. changes everything. So I have a little thing that I've been saying lately because I think it's easily. Yeah, y'all. So as y'all see from the jump, he is going, Trump is going to be very focused on getting that energy bill down. It's just not energy in, in per se. It's your gas prices. Like you said, that will lead everything else. Personally, in my personal life, I pay off my, I pay my, my gas. I pay that. So I've seen the price of gas go up. To $5. I've seen it go up. That affects me. I, I in America, y'all, all we can do is drive. We have to drive. We don't have public transportation. Or if we do, y'all know it's trash. Let's be real. Everyone drives. So gas prices go down. That saves a lot of money in a lot of people's pockets. Hey, if my electric bill goes down, thank you for. For real, for real, thank you. That will save me a lot. Just energy and all will definitely help. And like he said, once gas prices go down, that means the cost of deliveries, it goes down. It, so it it will lead the economy, I feel like, into a right spot. Shoot, I might need to invest me into some energy stocks if Trump get in. Because that sounds like it's going to be some growth over in that sector. That's not like it's going to be some growth. But yeah, he's going to lead with the energy. That is going to be the number one. I ain't going to lie. My gas tank, it, it costs a lot to fill up now. I ain't going to lie to you. So I would be happy to see gas prices go down. For, for sure. For sure. No no, no talk about it. Gas prices go down, I'm a happy camper. Off, off rip. Let's continue this, though. Easily achievable. You know, we pay very high energy costs, and especially now, but we're paying very, very high. I believe I'll be able to get energy down to 50%, 50, 50, 50% of what it is right now within. Y'all, if he do that, if he get energy prices down 50%, I'm about to save so much money. It's about to be, I'm about to get back so much money. It's going to be ridiculous. Like I said, I pay a lot. I pay like $200. Y'all think $200? Two, two and some change. Y'all, that's a lot to pay for electric bill, I think. I do. I like to stay comfortable in my house. So in the winter, that heat be on. And in the summer, the air be on. Yes, I do like to be, I got to sleep comfortable. So my my bill be kind of high. I be feeling like that 200, whatever, and some change, that be high. And then I have to drive far for work. Come on now, come on. If he drop everything by 50, percent <laughs> then a period of less than a year wow that's pretty good 
It's going to happen fast, okay? It's going to happen fast. But what are you going to do to do that? What causes that? They're going to drill. They're going to they're going to frack. They're going to do things that they they have tremendous. So taking the rigs off, taking the regulations. Yeah, yeah. Off. We do, oh, we have to. They put them back on. They put regulations back on that areas that have no environmental real meaning. They don't let them drill. They, they're taking leases away, government leases that you're hearing about. I think we can get energy costs down to half of what they. If we do that, that's pretty dramatic. If, if everything, all of those inflated prices are going to come down with it. I think the other piece of that, and I know he was part of your administration, and you and I were talking before we turned the cameras right. on that we have a mutual friend in Art Laffer, oh, and great. I know he helped a little bit with the tax code in he the did. last administration. And I personally have experienced the Laffer curve that lower taxes right. causes increased revenues to the federal government because it heats up the economy. And I'm a small business guy. When you lower my taxes, it doesn't mean I put it in my pocket. It means I hire people. Right. And exactly. so uh, talk about lowering taxes in the first year of your administration. Yeah, you probably saw my uh, plan, and mm -hmm. I think we have something really good. Uh, I was yesterday in North Carolina. I just want to stop. Did y'all see how Dave Ramsey just described that? I'm ready to be old and have some great experience like him. Because the way he did that, that's what they don't tell people with, with the taxes thing. They be like, oh, they're giving cuts to the rich. When it, it trickles down, it most times it trickles down. If you're dealing with a good person, with a good company, it's going to trickle down. Like he said, when taxes are lower, he hires more people. More people get, we get more raises. That's that's how I feel. It's more money in the economy. That's that's what it's going to be, especially if it's for the middle class. It's going to go to the middle class. I've never seen a trickle up economy work. I, I have it. I have it. Because it, well, it, it, it doesn't make sense. That's actually why. That's why. If the if the top. Get squeezed, they gonna squeeze the bottom. That's how. That's how it will. it's gonna come down to us. It just works its way down. The economy probably really only works top down. Squeeze the rich, it, we're gonna be the ones that suffer. At the end of the day, that's how it's gonna be. They're not gonna pay more taxes. The price is gonna go up. That's what's gonna happen. I, I just don't think people see it. Come on, Trump. Tell, tell us about these taxes, though. Carolina, which is great. That was the furniture capital of the world. And China then went in and did a number and took so much of that business, you know, most of that business. The talent. I used to go there to buy furniture yeah, for hotels too. and things. I, Hickory, it was, Hickory, North Carolina. Yep, in Hickory. I was in Hickory yesterday and made a speech. And we're going to bring it all back. What we're doing is this sort of a two-phase. Number one, I took taxes from 39% to 21%. You know that better mm -hmm. than anyone. It's the largest tax cuts in the history of our country. And that was great. That's why we became so successful. You, you know, it's funny. think we can do that again? Yeah, I think we can go lower. And I'll tell you what I'm doing. Uh, I'm bringing it from 21 to 15, but you have to manufacture your product here. And then you pay 15%. And then I'm going to put tariffs on countries so they can't come in and steal our business so that our businesses now can be competitive. Not that, I mean, China came in and just stole all our furniture and, and many other industries, by the way, including steel. And I save steel by putting 50% and 100% tariffs on all of, all of the steel that they were dumping. But we're going to do, so in other words, this is a dream for you then. We'll bring it. Yo, when he say China came in and stole all the industries, I literally just think about all the stuff I had that said is made in China. I, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm confused. It's confusing. Why is, I thought China was, you know, like, the enemy i don't want to say it like that you know but we're we're playing against china that's who we're competing against we're competing against china and we get everything i i read is like made in china i'm like okay this is okay i thought we were competing against them but to me it seemed like they getting the leg up of it everything we own is made in china Dang, I wonder what would happen if China just decided to, to, to cut the rug up under us. We wouldn't have nothing. Yeah, but they definitely, if anything was made in America, it's automatic. They just kind of took the wheels right under us. Nope. China now. It's going to be Chinese made. Yep. Made in China. Read it right on your tag. So, I think that is a great plan to get people to manufacture in the U.S. Bring jobs back to the U.S. It's going to be playing jobs for folks. That's how I feel. If I wanted that 15%, guess what? I'm a manufacturer 
right here in the U.S., and I'm going to hire some folks. We going to get that tax cut. It's going to trickle down to my employees. Let's get it. We're bringing uh, the tax rate from 21. Remember, it was 39, and it was really 50 if you add state and local and all of the other things. So we're going to bring it down from 21 to 15. I got it down to 21, which everyone said was impossible and got it approved by Congress. So it's, you know, it's there. And we're going to bring that down to 15. But you have to make your product in the United States. Yeah. And we do see federal revenues go up when the taxes go down well, because well, the economy well, goes. You saw it with me. So saw, We saw it with Reagan, too. You saw it with Reagan. So at 39% and then down to 21%, you would think we'd do half or you'd do much less. In the first full year, we did much more revenue mm -hmm. in the United States than we did at 39 In other words, we took in much more Money, which is how you solve the deficit. I mean, Bill Clinton almost balanced the budget, but he's actually yes, right. yeah, that's true, that's true. He did, and cost cutting. Yeah, we have plenty of cost cutting to do too, and that's okay. Yeah, that, that's in definitely. fact, I'm going to ask Elon, who's a great guy, but he's pretty good. <laughs> that's a great cutting. interview. Yeah, oh, that was a great interview. Yeah, was. That was that was some interview. We did uh, pretty big numbers. I hear we did like 900 million people or something. <laughs> that was a pretty good. But he's a great guy, and he gave me a full endorsement and all of that. But uh, he he's got a good sense on that. There's tremendous. Uh, cost cutting that we can do and affect nothing. It just, we're not going to affect anybody. We're not going to hurt anybody. We have to save social security and keep it good and solid. I don't want to be raising ages or anything. I don't want to do, uh, they're putting migrants into social security. When, when they get finished, they are, if she got elected, this country is going bust. If she got elected, we're going back to 1929 depression. It's, it would be a disaster for Medicare, Social Security. They're allowing millions and millions of people to come in. You can't use these schools anymore. The quality of life in this country has gone so bad because of what they've done. One of the things that our viewers know about us, we work with uh, tens of thousands of small business people. And so coaching them. There you go, Dave. Get them back on track, Dave. This is this is what I'm talking about. Good stuff, Dave. Get them back on track. Don't let them, don't let them go off to the side. Get them back on track. Let's get right back down to the issue. Let's go. 54% of the gross domestic product is businesses, 500 people or less. Yeah. Almost right. everyone in America, ha over half, almost 60% of people work for yeah. a small business. And I know small businesses are where jobs come from, yeah. not from government. So politicians don't create jobs, small businesses do. The small business, businesses, 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 business. people like me often, yeah. <laughs> when the politicians say they're making, ones making the jobs, we're the ones making the jobs. Sure. But when, but you guys, right. when you guys in government can take your hands off of small business mm -hmm. and allow us to do our thing, we're able to employ people and change things. So how can you help small businesses? Well, the best way is just letting them do what they have to do, but we still have to give them a playing field. If we don't give them a level playing field, they will die. And that's what happened before. That's why China came in. That's why all the, they came in and they came in at a level like nobody's ever seen and we did nothing about it. So the word tariff to me is a very beautiful word because it can, it can save our country truly. And yet I think because of graft, because of a lot of uh, consulting payments and other things that given by other countries, we have so much fighting with politicians on using it. I saved our steel industries by putting tariffs on steel that China came in and dumped. And you know what they do? They dump and dump and dump. Everybody goes out of business. Then they buy those businesses very cheap and then they raise the prices. They're higher than they ever were. That's one of the many benefits that they have if they want to do it. But by putting tariffs on, as an example, in the furniture business in, uh, in North Carolina, it was so vibrant and they stole our business. And they charge us, if you wanted to build a furniture place, if you want to sell your furniture in China, they won't take it. But if you want to build a plant in China to make furniture in China using their labor, they open it. We're doing the same thing. But a lot of people like, oh, well, we don't want to have tariffs. The country was at the richest point in its history in the 1890s. It was all tariffs. If you looked at uh, William McKinley as an example, he was a big tariff president. They had committees that were put in charge of what to do with the money. We were taking in so much money. And McKinley would say, why should we let other people come in and steal our factories and steal our workers and steal our jobs? And why shouldn't we benefit? And he tariffed the other countries. And we made so much. And then they went to the income tax system later on. But they would actually have, they had a blue ribbon committee. Our country was so rich. They didn't know what to do with the money. And this blue ribbon committee was set up to determine how can we spend all of this money? And they took it in through tariffs. Hmm. But we can turn our country around, make it strong, and then guard it with tariffs. Yeah. Let's change gears for a second. My wife Sharon and I were in Scotland too. So as y'all see, Trump is going all in on tariffs. Hey, like I said, I, I I don't have much more to say about that. We don't already kind of talked about it, kind of rehashed that out. But yeah, he's all in on tariffs. Bring bring manufacturing back to the U.S. Let's make the U.S. more competitive out here on the world market. Let's go.
on two weeks ago, and we played a bunch of different courses there, including Turnberry. Good. Which arguably, according to the golf guys I was playing with, is the nicest course in the UK right now. And uh, certainly the halfway house. Oh, the lighthouse isn't out there. that good? Turnberry's amazing. Yeah. It? But what I, what I came away with, not only is the golf course great, just, just to give you a huge compliment, you. you know that, but the staff and the team, the excellence in the hotel, in the restaurants, in the golf shop, everybody we dealt with. Talk about what it's like to work for Donald Trump. How do you hire leaders and put people in place to do that? Because I know you're obviously not there personally managing yeah. that, but you put a culture in place in your organization, and that applies to the administration as well, hiring people yeah. that are quality leaders. Well, my son, Eric, is very much involved, and he runs mm -hmm. a lot of it. And Don helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ivanka, to a lesser extent, you know, she's a... Mmh. -hmm great mother and everything. Mm -hmm. She did a fantastic job in the administration. All she wanted to do is get people jobs. And she'd go around and see uh, Exxon and see Walmart. She wanted jobs for people. It's really pretty amazing. She could have had a very glamorous job and she would have done well. But uh, Eric's done a great job. And I did a similar type of job when I was doing it. Now I'm doing a thing called running for president. So I don't get, <laughs> but we rebuilt Turnberry. Turnberry was considered one of the greatest courses in the world it, because the land is so incredible, right? With the ocean and yeah, you know, that ninth all over the, you're hitting over the ocean. How good a golf are you? Eh, 13. All right, that's not great. great. I'm that's just learning. I've only been playing five years. I'm just learning. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Well, enjoyed you and Bryson's 50. Wasn't that That was great? fun. That was a great video. That one did well it in did. terms of the ratings. It did. He can swing a club. He can swing he and he's hey, a great about guy. Y'all know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, if you want to. But we, uh, we, we did well. We did yeah, well. You did. It was very fun. So what leadership qualities when Eric's hiring did you teach him to look for? Well, I, I like the recommendation business, but what I like best is taking people that are in the company and moving them up. You take a waitress as an example, and uh, she's a beautiful person in every way. She took over that whole Republican convention. <laughs> yeah. And Kai, Kai, our beautiful Kai. Um, so What's the, one thing, the one thing I always told my kids, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. Now, in my day, there were no drugs. It was alcohol and cigarettes. And, and I had a brother that went through a lot with alcohol, and, and uh, he taught me a lot. He really taught me a lot. And my brother, Fred, and he had a problem with alcohol to put it mildly, and he would always, and he was quite a bit older than me, and he'd been through, but the way you get off is if you never start, if you never start, I never had a glass I'm of gonna, alcohol, I'm greatest it. sensation. If you've never smoked, you never, you just don't have that problem doing certain things, and they love getting up in the morning. You understand that, what you discuss yeah. better than anybody else. Well, I'm happy to have her if she'd come. I'm sure she we'll would see. be. I'm sure she'd love to come. Yeah. She wouldn't come. <laughs> so, I hear you going back to Butler and finish the speech. I am. I'm going to say, as I was saying. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so when that happened and you get in the car, I know I saw a clip the other day that Melania was watching on television. Yeah. So she saw. Ah. The degree angle. If I was a little off, one way. The whole thing is make America great again. All right. Mm -hmm. That's getting the tax cuts approved. Biggest tax cuts in history. That even with that terrible interruption that just destroyed the world, we had the greatest four years. The economy was so great. The job numbers were the best ever, et cetera. And I think just that concept of what I had done. The performance. Yeah. But individual things, getting the tax cuts approved, biggest tax cuts in history, biggest regulation cuts in the history of our country, uh, rebuilding the military. We we did a job in the military. I rebuilt the whole military. And then you see a lot of that military being given to Afghanistan stupidly because they left the country. I mean, you know, and now you see them braiding it back and forth. Uh, that was, I think, the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, what they did. But there were a lot of individual achievements that we had, uh, the creation of Space Force. You know, Space Force is now dominating space. And when I came, there was no Space Force. The first time since Air Force, 78 years, maybe 80 years by now. And we are dominating space now. And we wouldn't be. Uh, we were being, we, we were in third place by far. And now we're way in first place. And it's very important. Militarily, it's very important. President Trump, thanks for taking time. Thank you very Your much. told us you got a speech here in a few minutes. Hey. I feel like overall, at least in the beginning point, in the beginning point, that was a good interview. It was a good interview. I feel like they kind of went off on a tangent with kind of the second half of it, talking about his personal life and just getting to know Trump a little bit more. I feel like that was that part. But in the beginning, good stuff from, from a Trump, good stuff from Dave Ramsey. I feel like we got everything that we needed to know in the beginning, how Trump's policies will affect us, the middle class, from the from the jump if he is elected president. But like I said, y'all, we got a few more, few more days until we know. Basically, uh, a month, a month and a few days.
before we know who the next president is. Voting has already started, so make sure you get out and vote. Vote early if you can. That way you don't have to worry about it. I probably will vote early myself. 